Shalom. My name is Kaziah Badi Israel, and here is my testimony and how I came into this walk. All my life, well, most of my life, my 27 years I walked this earth, I was a very devout Christian. And I thought I was going to die a Christian, a very devout Christian. I was a typical church girl, went to church three days out of the week. So I thought that's how I was going to live out my life. But Yah the Almighty, He had other plans for me. And I'm going to share with how, you know, I came into this walk. And first, I'm going to talk about how the, how the mindset that I was in shortly before coming into this walk, how Yah was dealing with me. Although I did not know Him, but He was dealing with me in a, in a, in, 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 a, in a profound way. And I know it was around because I've been in this walk for six years. And in 2006, 2005, 2006, that's when I really started questioning my Christian belief because I was under the teaching of a Gentile, Gentile pastor, and everything was Eurocentric, you know. All the about biblical characters were wide except for the exception of a few. You know, all the Gentile teachers, preachers that I sat under were, were wide Gentile. So that was my, you know, my um, mentality. You know, everything white was white. Even though I tried to have black pride and everything, but yet I still had that mentality, everything that white was right. So I just started around 2005, 2006. I was re really beginning to question the significance of my people, the black people as I called them at the time. I would, you know, read our history on how we were mistreated by the whites and, you know, slavery and everything and how we were still being discriminated against. And I was like, what, I mean, what is a purpose for, I mean, why are we going through what we're going through and look like we never can get ahead? You see all these other, you know, minority groups, they can, you know, come over here, they may be oppressed for a time, but yet they still can get ahead. But why we as black people, why can't we get ahead? Why is we going through what we're going through? And I saw that, you know, things about us stood out from the Gentile. You know, we were, you know, more gifted and things and music and more spiritual. And even white people would compliment on how, you know, spiritual we were, yet we had so many ways about us that the white man can't compare to. And I was like, but why are we such an oppressed people? I mean, there has, must be a significance to us. So the past, you know, the year or two before, you know, being brought into this truth, finding this truth, that's how Yah was dealing with me. And I would, you know, in, in the morning before work, I would get on my knees and pray. I was like, I would say, Lord God and Jesus, I would say, why I me? Mean, why are we going through this? You know, I would read stories in the news about us and this and that. And then shortly before coming in truth, I really started thinking about um, the Israelites in the Bible, the Hebrews in the Bible. And I would compare the modern day Jews to the Hebrew Israel, the Israelites in the Bible. And I, they didn't really have a connection. I didn't see anything that connected them to the Hebrews in the Bible. But that's what, you know, the accepted belief that they were the Jews, you know, the true children of Israel. So I accepted that, but I still had questions. And then, you know, I would hear the theory of the blacks being the descendants sent from Ham. And you know how... Canaan was cursed and this and that. I said, well, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe they're right after all. But I still couldn't accept it, that we were from a cursed lineage. So I started, you know, digging. And then I read the scriptures where Esau was described as red and hairy. And it was saying that that meant he was white. And David was described, described as ruddy. So that meant he was white. That's what they took that as being white. So I was really trying to find out, well, were the ancient, what, were the ancient Israelites white people? Or were they black people? So I work in a library, so I have a lot of time to do researching. So I just did a Google because, you know, y'all was really dealing with me. Not knowing his name, but he was really dealing with me. Those questions was, was you know, in my heart, in my heart. So I did a Google search on Ruddy. And then different things came up on Red and Ruddy. And then the, one of the first links came up was the article that Obadiah wrote on the Israelite Heritage website about Red Ruddy and talks about David and Esau. And that article was saying that Ruddy did not mean white. He was meaning like a, we call like a, a red bone, light-skinned black person. That's what it was meaning. And I was like, wow. 
But the thing is, I didn't realize that, you know, we were the Hebrew Israelites and he had a baby on there, a Hebrew Israelite baby. And I'm thinking, that's a black baby, that's not a Hebrew Israelite baby <laughs> <laughs> on that website. But I read that and it made sense. Now he brought in the Egyptians, their um, artwork and things like that, example of red. I was like, hmm, interesting. So I believe I printed off that article, but I know if I didn't print it off, I kept it, you know, in my heart. And then I started doing more research. I put in the physical appearance of the ancient Israelites. And then the articles, more articles came up. And it was just showing through scripture proof about the physical appearance, showing that they were black people. And I was like, wow, now this is indisputable. But still, at the same time, I did not make the connection that it was talking about us. I was still thinking it was talking about some African tribes, you know, in Africa, not us specifically. And I saw the website and I saw the different titles of the articles and after reading and pondering on the first two articles I found, Ruddy and the Physical Appearance, I decided to click on the one with curses. And then I saw curses and then it was um, saying, comparing, using Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, breaking it down, explaining all why, why we're going through what we're going through. And just it was just perfect interpretation. It was just like, just what I needed, just my answer. Because I was wondering, you know, why we as black people, why we were suffering, why we were suffering and all of that. And I was like, man, 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 this is it. And what really kept me was when I saw the Negro spirituals, the one that said Kumbaya, they wasn't really saying come by here, they were saying come by ya. And I was like, it just had me just in tears. And I was like, I mean, just hallelujah. You know, I was, I was still, you know, calling on Lord and God at the time. But it took time to, um, you know, um, took time for me to really learn the name of Yah. And <laughs> that's just pretty much how I discovered, you know, who we, um, our purpose was as a um, people and things like that and, and significance what we were going through and I was just so so thankful because it really answered a whole lot of questions and and it really I was so happy you know I was on cloud nine I was floating but I didn't realize how much it would change my life after coming into it after sort of after I called on Yah I was calling on Yah and things like that it took me a while to get Lord God out of my vocabulary and then I brought it to my family my sisters, you know, they're very receptive. My parents, you know, my mother, I'm always sharing things with her about black history, and she was always so excited. But this one was a bit different. But um, anyway, it didn't, you know, it still, I still kept on in the truth and everything. But I didn't realize how much it would change my life. I would, I would stop, you know, going to church where I went three, three, ten to three days out of the week. And um, we didn't really serve, we didn't celebrate the holidays anyway, so that, that didn't make a big difference. But the thing is, um, how it just, you know, changed my perspective. I mean, now I see we as, quote unquote, black people, our significance. We are Yah's chosen people. From thinking that we were nothing, we were nobody, we had to play second fiddle to the Gentiles, to the white man, to, we are the teachers. We are the teachers of the, you know, the nation of kings and priests. And it really had to, I really had to reprogram, but y'all had to reprogram my mind and my mindset. And it really, you know, for a while it brought, it, it caused a rift between me and my family. But hallelujah, you know, my sister's coming into the truth. My sister, my other sisters are receptive. My parents, they're still devout Christians, but yet they still listen. And I just say hallelujah for that. And maybe in due time, they'll come in as well. And I just say, I'm just going to keep on in this walk. And I'm still having to make changes. But hallelujah, this, these six years has just been a tremendous blessing. And I just say, Toda Yah for showing me the light and showing me who I am. A Hebrew Israelite. One of Yah's chosen people. Hallelujah.